Welcome back, everybody, to the Piercing the Cosmic Veil show. Um, we appreciate you guys coming back. This has been a, um, quite an adventure with Mary Porter. We look forward to um, episode four. Um, I'd like to let everybody know we have Joseph Jordan from South Korea tuning in today. We have Lee Arn from uh, Australia. And um, I'm from Southern California. And then obviously our guest is from Canada. So um, if you've tuned in at all recently, you'll, you'll notice we've had um, quite a testimony with Mary. Um, it's been quite an adventure. And we're happy that you're back. If you are back and you enjoy these, these testimonies, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We'd like to get this information out to more people. Obviously, the whole goal here is to help people um, find resolution to spiritual warfare. And we all know that that's done by the power and authority of Jesus Christ. So again, thank you for coming back. I'd like Joe to um, start us off uh, on this final episode with Mary with a prayer. Um, take it away, Joe. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for letting us come together again for this opportunity to share your testimony of this life change, this beautiful life of Mary Porter, being able to show that no matter what a person has gone through, no matter how deep and damaging a person can be, your grace and saving, saving grace can bring this person to healing true healing. And these are what these testimonies are about. And we thank you for this opportunity to be able to bring all of us together from far parts of the earth, all at the same time, the same place. And we know you are in the midst when we share these shows. And we ask that you bind anything from the enemy, any attacks, any disruptions, so that we can get this proper message out of hope that we know that you bring and you have available for anybody going through this type of distractions and this type of delusion that the enemy brings on. And we thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we start off. This is our fourth session with Mary. And um, Mary spoke to me before and she said, this session is probably the most important session of what she's got to share with us. So let's hear it from Mary. Welcome, Mary. Hi, great to be back. Lovely to see you all. Fantastic. I just want to, um, hi. I just want to recap a little bit where we've been before we go into a, a huge healing that the Lord took me through. And um, my testimony is so vast and so huge and touches so many different topics that it's really difficult to, to narrow it down to what is to be included in my testimony. So I've been following the Lord's promptings and he's been sharing the various aspects that he wanted me to talk about. So just a summary, um, when I came to the Lord, um, I was in horrible shape, but I didn't know it. Um, I was taught by my parents that what was wrong was right, and what was right was wrong. I learned to lay down for man, and I gave up my will. My conscience was seared. My conscience was dead. The emotions were detached from me. I didn't feel anything. I had no fear. I was in the clutches of a serial killer. I wasn't afraid. I was ambushed by Turkish soldiers in Turkey. I wasn't afraid. Many, 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 many things. I should have ended up dead many times during my life, but wow, amazingly, no. And I was, uh, before prayer ministry especially, I was very alone. The Lord had taken me out of the church. Um, I didn't have any family. I didn't have any friends. I didn't have any discipleship. Uh, the survival system in my brain had been shut down. I had no fight, flight, or freeze instincts. And um, essentially, I believed lies 
all my life. And my life became a lie because I wasn't who our Lord created us me to be. So that's kind of a, a nutshell of some of the areas that cause great, great difficulty. I also um, had many erroneous learned behaviors. So uh, in a very precarious position, um, one of the things our Lord would like me to share is many people ask me, what does healing look like? Um, I'm just going to share a small healing, give people an idea before I go into the big one. There's, we, Pastor Randy and Angela and I uh, had started a prayer ministry together. And what happens during prayer ministry is we get together, we pray to the Father, we ask the Holy Spirit to come, and we ask the Lord lead. And we had been going, I can't remember, a year or two, I'm not sure. And Pastor Randy was taking two weeks holidays, which is fine. <laughs> when he came back, I was, I was very teary and I couldn't speak. And Pastor Randy and Angela looked at me and were saying, what's wrong, Mary? And I just, I couldn't speak. My tears were rolling down my cheeks. And I heard the Lord say, I am here, Mary. And if you could have just heard the tenor of his voice, it was so kind and loving and caring and compassionate. He saw I was having a hard time. I still cried and he spoke it again. I am here, Mary. And he wanted me to speak three words and I was having a hard time getting them out. And finally I spoke them and the three words were, you went away. Pastor Randy went away. And at that time I was operating at the level of a three-year-old. And our Lord showed me that rattling around in my subconscious was a hurt, a wound, when my father left the home and divorced my mother. As a three-year-old, I had no words. I didn't understand emotions. I didn't have emotions, but my father went away. And the healing comes in the tears and the speaking out to our Lord, where he burns off the dross and the memory becomes healed. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Absolutely. Good, okay. A, a lot of people don't really understand what healing is. And one of the telltale signs of being healed of something is when the issue comes up again and you have nothing attached to it, it doesn't bother you anymore. So that's a really good sign to look for. If things continually bother you, they've not been healed. Take them back to the Lord. Keep taking them back. So anyhow, that's just what a small healing of mine looked like. So um, one of the first things our Lord did for me was he breathed life into my spirit because my spirit had been crushed. And he did a lot of my healing through visions. And the first vision he gave me, and I just want to say, I know there's a lot of people out there that believe the Lord only speaks through his word. And I would agree predominantly, that's how he speaks. But he chooses to speak to everybody in a language they can understand. Some dreams and visions, some voice, some through the Holy Spirit, some through the word some through sermons watched online, some through other people speaking. Our Lord can speak to anyone he wants, however he wants and when he wants, and it will be geared to how the person will most assuredly get the message. I just wanted to say that. Um, so I was in Carlton Place. This is before prayer ministry. I was laying down in bed in the afternoon and 
a vision came to me of a fuchsia colored hibiscus flower and it was very beautiful and it was right in front of my face and then i noticed the petals started to move as though the wind was blowing it and then all of a sudden my wee head poked out and i was smiling and laughing and happy and i i knew i'm watching this vision i'm watching myself pop up and i know that i'm seeing jesus the vision anyway is seeing jesus and then i next i see he shows me my body attached to this flower with the head peeking through and my body looked like a shriveled up carcass of a worker bee completely flat dried out and shattered and the flower when the petals were moving he showed me that he was breathing life into my spirit that's the first thing he did um there's so many other things he did that all the healings were so huge but i'm just going to focus mostly on this big one coming up in prayer ministry near the beginning when we first started to meet it became apparent i had no emotions so pastor randy prayed to our father if he would please attach my emotions back to the experiences in my life they had been separated from me they don't just disappear into the ether somewhere they're just they're held somewhere i don't know where the lord didn't show me he just because i some things we just don't need to know mm -hmm. so pastor prayed that prayer and a few weeks later in the e evening pastor had a an evening group and it was small there were five of us that we're meeting and we would get together once a week on Thursdays and talk about our week and share a meal and read the Bible. Sometimes we'd watch a video. This particular night we watched a video and everyone was seated semicircle around the screen, except me, I was in the front for some reason. I don't know why, <laughs> but anyway, we watched the video and then when it ended, I all of a sudden came to, and what I mean by that is I was no longer see it seated looking at the video. I had turned around and I was looking at Pastor Randy and I sat there and I thought, what just happened? I had missed some time there. And then I, my hands went to my face and it was soaking wet. And I looked at Pastor and I said, Pastor, my face is wet. And he said, yes, you burst into tears. And that was when the Lord attached the emotions to me. It was very powerful. Everyone felt his presence. The Lord also did some healing on Scott. And Scott had said that he had never ever in all his life being, of being a Christian felt the Lord's presence so strongly. And it's a wonderful point to make here that our Lord doesn't heal just one person quite often he'll be in the group of people and he heals everybody talk to everybody he's all inclusive when two or more are gathered in my name I am there so that was the next thing that happened and now the big healing that I would like to talk about is the healing of my fragmented mind which the emotions were part of. The emotions were another fragment somewhere buried in my mind. And there was another fragment and the Lord called him, we three. And it's a fragment that um, was still attached to my mind. If you remember from last week, the visual our Lord gave us of peeling an orange. When you peel the orange, but don't take the peel off the, the orange, that's what a fragmented mind looks like. So our Lord decided to call him we three. And Pastor Randy said, at least I think it's him, 
uh, our father wants to reparent you. And at that moment, I finally realized what he had meant when I was in Central America and that rainbow colored laser beam of light came in through the living room window, turned the computer off at the Lyric at a flash of light, turned the computer back on at the Lyric, may take you back to the beginning. What he meant was, may I take you back to the beginning of your life and reparent you. That was huge. Mm -hmm. I, at that moment, it just felt to me like an honor and a privilege to be given that opportunity from the creator of the universe. He cared that much and as he cares about everybody. So it all began with our father giving me an experience as a three-year-old on, on a beach. I didn't have godly experiences with my earthly father. I missed all the little things a little girl should have with her father. So our father in heaven, through Jesus, um, opened up a series of visions to heal this area of the fragmented mind called we three <coughs> excuse me and if i can read it lee is that okay of course go for it harry okay it is long as you know but it's in it's a complete healing of one portion of the fragmented mind and of course it just disappeared from my screen i have to collapse something there we go there we are okay so it begins we played in the sunlight at the edge of the day the hour before sunset the beach seemed endless the, the blue sky ever thus and the ocean disappeared along with the seams of time he ran ahead his hair waving madly in the breeze he was laughing while watching over his shoulder at toddler mary stumbling and falling trying to get her footing in the little mountains of sand toddy mary's hair was a golden wheat blonde with tiny ringlets just past her ears she wore a white cap sleeve dress with smocking across the front her sandals were white with shiny golden buckles she laughed along with him. They utterly delighted in one another, playing this game of tag. After a time, he flung shining balls of light over his shoulder. Toddler Mary giggled and marveled at how they bounced around. To her, they seemed alive. She ran zigzagged along the sand, picking them up, placing them in her arms. There were so many, it wasn't long before she could hold no more, and they began to slip. You dropped your lights, she, she yelled. Swiftly, he turned around. So I did, he said, and walked toward her. He sat down. Once she was seated before him, he asked her to pick up a light so they could look at it closer. No, you pick one. They are your lights, she said. He selected one and held it in his hands. He asked Toddler Mary to gently open the top of the light. With tiny fingers deftly rummaging around the top, it opened. What do you see? He asked. Peering into the top, Toddler Mary saw a scene before her, similar to the one, <clears throat> excuse me, similar to how one would view a snow globe at Christmas. I see a whole universe in there. What else do you see? Look way down at the bottom. Oh, I see you and me on the beach. And so it was that day, that day where I discovered my father in heaven playing tag with me at age three. We totally delighted in one another at a time only he could restore from the, what the locusts had eaten in the relationship between me and my earthly father. He was reparenting me in the ways a child should go, according to Proverbs 22, 6. Teach a child in the trade of his way, and when he is old, he shall not depart from it. 
and that's the end of that vision. Um, did you want to comment in between visions or what would you like to do? That was lovely, Mary. Yeah. Yeah. It, you give such a beautiful graphic detail. Um, it was like watching a movie in my mind. Thank you. Please go ahead. Ah, well, bless, bless your heart. It was such a joy to know what a father's love is. Mm. I had no clue. Mm. It was just amazing. So now we go to the first appearance of We Three. <coughs> Excuse me. The sun was very hot and shone brightly on We Three in God's gardens in back of the mission. The sky is falling, We Three shouted. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. We Three's friends sat watching We Three from atop the fallen chimney. The chimney lay on its side in front of the grapevine growing up a concrete wall. There you are, shouted we three. He was so very happy to see his friend. What is it, little one, said we three's friend. It's the sky, it's falling, it's falling down. We three signaled up with his arms and then down like an elevator descending to the ground. It's supposed to be up there, up with the arms pointing heaven heavenward. I see. This is a very serious problem, said We Three's friend. It is, exclaimed We Three, putting his hands on his hips. It is a very, very serious problem. Yes, and I see that it does not make you happy. No, it does not make me happy, not at all. I can see that. I know exactly what to do about it. You do, said We Three, and he blinked. We three's friend rose, turned around, and walked into the grapevine. Hey, where are you going? We three raced over to the concrete wall and searched throughout the vines for his friend. He was somewhere in the branches and leaves. We three just knew it. Here I am, little one. We three was surprised. His friend had appeared in a place different than when he had dis disappeared into the grapevine. His friend's face was peeking at him from another area along the wall. We three walked over to where his friend's friend was looking at him. Why did you go away? asked We three. We three's friends moved around in the vine again and appeared a little ways further down the wall. Here I am. We three laughed. He liked what his friend was doing. It was a lovely game. We three's friends smiled at him and came out of the grapevine. He walked over to the cucumber vines growing up the trellis behind the patio area. We three followed him. We three's friend leaned down and met We three's blinking gaze. We three, would you like to begin learning how to stop the sky from falling? Oh, yes. Yes, I would. Okay. I would like you to turn around and face the cucumbers. We three did as he was asked. Now, can you count to 10? Oh yes, I can, I can. Good, I would like you to put your hands in front of your face, cover your eyes and count to 10. I will go to another place and then I would like you to come and find me. Would that be all right with you? Yes, said we three and he giggled. One, two, three. We three's friend walked seven steps toward the concrete walking path and stood very still. Eight, nine, ten, shouted we three. I see you. Yes, you do. Well done, we three. Would you like to try that again? Yes. We three hid his face in his hand and began counting. We three's friend walked a few steps over to the wooden stairway leading to the upstairs apartments over the mission. He ducked his head under the steps and moved around in the tall flowering weeds behind the cucumbers. He bumped his head. We three giggled. He heard his friend moving around. We three knew exactly where he was. Eight, nine, ten, he shouted. And he opened his eyes to see his friend peering through the dangling fruit and smiling at him. You found me. Again, said we three. One. Okay, one more time. One, two, three. We three's friend walked another seven steps and 
stood in front of what we three called the garden forest. We three's friend stepped carefully through the tomato plants. When he reached the green beans growing up bamboo, bamboo poles, he moved between them. He stood among the vines, a piece of his white robe ruffling in the breeze. Eight, nine, ten, shouted we three, and he opened his eyes. We three didn't see his friend. His friend wasn't peeking at him from behind the cucumber vines. We three looked toward the concrete patio stones. No, he was not there either. We three ran to the concrete path. No, his friend wasn't there. His friend was gone. Instead of we three seeing his friend, what he saw on the edge of God's garden was a giant trash heap. Garbage stuck out from behind strewn pink Barbie toys, broken bicycles, and old barbecues. These three suddenly felt cold and rubbed his arms. He knew there were rats in that garbage, big ones. Tears gathered in his eyes when he realized he could not see his friend. Out the corner of his eye, he saw something white ruffling in the beans. There you are, shouted we three. He heaved a great sigh of relief. We three ran to his friend when he had come out from behind the beans. And we three jumped into the arms of his friend. Yes, we three, I am here, said we three's friend. I have been here all along, but I could not find you. Not at first, but then you did, he said, and loosened We Three's grip on his neck. I didn't like that last one. Oh, you didn't? No, I was cold and my eyes wanted to cry. I see, and you also look very tired. I am. We Three's friend sat We Three down on the ground. He leaned over and met We Three's eyes. We Three blinked, and he blinked again. We Three, would you like to have a little rest with me? Yes, follow me, said We Three's friend. We Three's friend moved through the garden forest to the concrete path. He walked over to the chimney and slipped into the grapevines. We Three, not wanting to lose sight of his friend ever again, quickly scrambled through the leafy branches and followed his friend into the grapevines. Hey, said we three, it's really nice in here. He looked around at the overhead leaves which formed out of leafy heart shapes among the branches. Sunlight streamed through them. We three followed his friend to where he sat on a big rock. His friend stretched out his arms and welcomed to we three. We three scrambled into them and yawned. I don't know how you do these things, but they are very nice. We three, what? Is the sky falling now? No, not in here. Good. Now why do you think that is? I don't know, but I'm glad I cannot see it. We three lay his head upon his friend's chest. His friend held We Three tightly to himself. You know, I did not like it when I could not find you, said We Three. Yes, I saw that, and I'm sorry for that part. His friend stroked curls away from We Three's forehead. We Three blinked and looked at his friend. I was cold and my eyes felt funny. Yes, I saw that. Maybe next time the sky is falling, you can do those things I taught you. What things? To close your eyes, count to 10, and look for me. That way you won't feel cold anymore, and you won't cry or be afraid because you know how you will find me. Yes, I can do that. You made the sky stop falling. How do you do all those things? I can do all those things because I am your friend, and my name is Jesus. That's the end of the second vision. Is there anything anybody wants to say or? Whoa, it's, um, it's pretty heavy and beautiful at the same time. I wish I could write like that. 
Me too. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, what, what I found so interesting in that particular um, vision was how, in, how Jesus introduced himself to a three-year-old. Yeah. And how he taught how he taught a three-year-old biblical principles, such as mm -hmm. we can't see him, but we know he's there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and other biblical uh, principles. Definitely. So I'll go on to the next one. Yes. No, Mary. What's what? Yes. I, I just something to think about. Um. What I see here is you've been given a children's book. Yes, that's what Pastor and Angela said. It's um, there aren't too many ways to preach the gospel to a three-year-old. <laughs> no, and you've been given that. Mm. Something they well, consider. You think so? Yeah. We should talk. We'll talk about this offline. I can show you how to do that. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely right. a, this is definitely a gift. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, one of many, I'm sure, that you have, Mary. Yeah. Well, this is just a huge uh, healing, and it was just so beautiful. Because uh, if you notice so far, it's nothing but love. It's nothing but the mm -hmm. love of God. Yeah. And there's only one fearful moment and that is when we three feels alone mm. and he's in that back garden and he sees the, the garbage dump mm. so here we go to the next one hey mary real another quick break. before you start oh, on the sorry. next one no that's fine i, I just wanted to yeah. say it reminds me when we were talking about healing and we're talking about you know having being parented um over over again the right way it just makes me think um when we and I, i'm sure the viewers can understand this and as we can but when we come to christ and you come to him and the old man as it says in scripture has gone away and the new man is finally there and that relationship has been has been built we do learn as children, at least, or at least I did, and my mind and everything I had known as a child, it, it, learning of having a relationship with Jesus Christ and him teaching, it's like, it, you're exactly right. It's like I, I, we, I was never taught correctly by my parents. I was never taught correctly by the schools. I was never taught to, by my peers, taught correctly by my peers. So, and that's a lot of that has to do, obviously, with the enemy, but it's the relearning of who you are and being nurtured the way that we should have been originally. So again, like Lee said, it's, it's not only a heavy story, but it's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, bless your heart. Bless your heart, Jason. Okay. I'll go on. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. The next vision. This is where we three gives the sky to Jesus. On another bright and sunny day, we three lay on his back atop the concrete path behind the mission. He was wedged between the patio seating area and the barbecue area. His hands were stretched toward heaven. Along came Jesus in his heavily threaded whitish cotton robe, his hands before him with fingers entwined as though he were in prayer. We three, what are you doing? The sky fell down. I'm trying to hold it up. Your back must be very sore, said Jesus. He leaned over with his hands on his knees to get a better look at we three, holding up the sky. It is, but I have to hold it up, said we three. We three was no longer scared of the sky falling down. He had counted to ten. He had not been cold, nor had his tears wanted to cry. But he must have forgotten something because the sky still fell down. Why are you holding up the sky, asked Jesus. Because if it falls anymore, it'll make a big hole. A hole in what? The ground. 
The sky is very heavy, you know. We three puffed air out of his mouth to move the curls from his forehead. Yes, I see that. Would you like me to help you hold up the sky? Oh, yes, please. Jesus lay down on his back beside we three. All was quiet for a few moments. We three squiggled and wiggled around to get into a more comfortable position. He was grateful for Jesus helping him. Oh, good, said we three. That's better. Now the ground won't get a big hole. We three, the earth would be okay. No, it would not. Why is that? Because it would make a big hole in the root cellar. I see. There's a root cellar under the gardens? Yes. I put a wall of Jonah's gourds in there. We three blinked and blinked and blinked again. Once more, he blew air out of his mouth, and then he heaved a great sigh. I see, said Jesus. How long are you going to keep them like that, as long as it takes? That could be a very long time. I know, but I have to. There's nobody else to do it. Jesus and we three lay on their backs, holding up the sky together. They watched white puffy clouds skid above their noses. We three blinked and blinked and blinked again. We three, why are you trying to save that wall of Jonah's gourds? Because of the little baby, we, we three whispered. Shh, she is sleeping. I see, whispered Jesus. And does this baby have a name? Yes, her name is Mary. Jesus looked at we three struggling under the weight of the sky, his heart filled with great sorrow. We three, you look much too tired holding up the sky. I am. Would it be okay with you if I picked up the sky and put it back? You can do that? Oh, yes, I can. Would you like to help me? How? I will lift it up from under your fingers, said Jesus. You will have to let go of the sky so I can do that. But it might fall down again. It won't. Promise? Promise and trust me, said Jesus. We three breathed air out of his mouth, and very slowly, we three unfurled his fingers one by one. Jesus slipped his hands under we three's and gently lifted the sky from we three's grasp. Wow, said we three. You put the sky back where it belongs, up there. Yes, you look like you might enjoy some rest. Yes, I would. Would you like to rest with me again? In your grapevine? Yes, said Jesus, follow me. We three followed Jesus into the grapevine. Jesus walked over to his big rock and sat down among green ferns and tall seed trees. A babbling brook beside him. We three scrambled into the arms of Jesus and sighed. What is it, we three? Oh, I was just thinking that I like it in here. And why is that? I like it in here because there is no sky. That's the end of that vision. I take it back, Mary. This is not a children's book. This is an no. adult. Oh. This is an adult's book that you read to children. Mm. This is for the adults. Ah, so you mean to um, share Jesus with them? This is this is amazing. Mm. <clears throat> this is this is an amazing concept here, because oh my. You get it, Jason? Oh, I do. Yeah, I do. Praise the day. It's just, it's all good. It's all good. So yeah. much, so much to be done. Yeah. We need to all pray. We all, it just, just, it just, it just makes, it just reaffirms the, the theme I have starting this year is pressing. We all need to be pressing uh -huh. in and we all need to be actively pursuing our purpose um and one thing that i've learned is, is that the, my flesh is weak my spirit's willing but my flesh is weak and i don't want to do things and every time i don't want to do something that's when um 
he's able to use me the best. It, he's able to use the best part of me. Um, in, in saying that, you know, these gifts that, we're, that we've been given and, and the, the listeners out there that are, that are that, that, under, that know, have a, a relationship with Christ or, 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 the, or the listeners that are, are building that relationship, I encourage you all to, to press in to what he's, he's, he's speaking to your heart. And when you don't want to do something and it has to do with Christ in any way, shape or form, press in. You guys, time is short. It really is. And mm. it's just mm. such a blessing, Mary. Joe's right. There's so much that can be done here. And we'll, we'll have to talk more about that. Hopefully Joe can work with you on probably how, yeah. how we could you know, help you out, put this together in a way that's impactful. Okay. The, the, right. con the concept here, Mary, is, is a parent who's been through the trials and tribulations yep. of life is reading this child's story to a child who will first now learn about Jesus, but this adult who's reading this story to their child who's been through these trials and tribulations is going to see the things that you saw. Absolutely. And be changed. This is, this is a amazing <laughs> concept thank you and keep in mind this is all visions that he gave me he gave yeah. me one vision a week wow yeah and it, it also goes to show that our lord will not give us any more than we can handle at once good point um yes because if he had ministered to three all at once it would have been overwhelming to a three-year-old yeah, sure. yeah. Or to an yeah. adult. Yeah. So this is this is how our Lord healed this particular fragmented piece of my mind. Um, I'll continue on. I think this is the last one. And this is where our Lord brings we three to Christ. <laughs> if that makes mm. sense. Jesus shouted we three yes hello we three said jesus jesus sat on a reddish rock in front of the sea the sun was setting behind him the first twinkling of stars burst forth from the sky what is it we three he asked jesus jesus shouted we three he hopped from one foot to the other over the hot sand on the beach his arms flailed up and down beside his ears Everything is all right, little one. Jesus said we three again. You have your lights in your lap. Can we play with them? Ah, yes, my lights. I would like to talk to you about these lights. Okay. These are very special lights that will someday belong to other people. Like mine? Mine is a special light in there? Yes, it is. It is a very special light to me. Well, said we three, he sat down in front of Jesus and crossed his legs. Where are the people for those lights? Can we give them the lights now? No, these are my lights to give to people. And these people have not, have not met me yet. Why not? They are still looking for me. For them, it is sort of like how you and I got to know each other in the garden behind the mission. Do you remember? Oh, yes, said we three, and he blinked. You taught me how to find you. Yes, I did. And you learned how to find me. And you didn't play with any lights be belonging to anyone else. No, I didn't play with anybody else's lights, just the sky. Yes, and there... You did do something that was not quite right. You held up the sky over baby Mary. And because you did that, baby Mary could not see my light. Oh, said we three, blinking. Yes, I did that. The sky does not belong to you, we three. No, it does not. It is your sky. Yes, it is my sky. Jesus was very quiet for a few minutes. 
We three fidgeted in the sand. He blinked and blinked and blinked again. Tears gathered in the corners of his eyes. We three felt very sad. I'm sorry, said we three. There was no one else out there to help her. I didn't know what else to do. It is okay, we three. I forgive you for trying to hold up my sky over baby Mary. You do, as we three? Yes, I forgive you. Can baby Mary see your light now? That the sky is back up where it belongs? Would you like to see? Oh, yes. Jesus and we three stood outside baby Mary's bedroom. The room was dimly lit by the moon outside her window. Jesus stepped through the doorway and baby Mary's room lit up brilliantly. <gasps> It's like daylight in there, exclaimed we three from the doorway. Shh, said Jesus. Baby Mary is sleeping. Can I look at her in her crib? Yes, you can. Jesus took we three firmly by the hand and slowly and very quietly, we three stepped into baby Mary's bedroom. We three peered through the thick wooden bars of her crib. Oh, she is so pretty, said we three. Yes, she is. I can see her toes. One, two, three, eight, nine, ten. She has ten little toes. Yes, she does. Oh, look, I think your light makes her happy. She is smiling. Yes, she likes the warmth of my light. I am here for her now. You no longer have to hold up the sky or take care of baby Mary, we three. She is safe with me. Let us leave, leave her sleep and go back to the beach. Once settled back onto the sand in front of the jagged shoreline, we three looked up into the sky at the blinking stars. That is a lot of stars, said we three. Do you think baby Mary will see the stars one day? Yes, she will grow up and see the stars. And yes, there are many, many, many stars. And I have given each star a name. Really? Like what? Well, you see that group of little stars up there? Jesus pointed with his finger, and we three followed his fingertip to where Jesus pointed. Yes, I do. Well, those stars, a group of them, they're called the Pleiades. Oh my, that is a very funny name. Yes, it is a very funny name. And do you see those three large blinking lights over there? Jesus changed the direction of his finger and we three's eyes followed him. Yes. And Jesus said, those are called the band in a group of stars called Orion. They make up his belt. A belt? Like a man wears for his pets? Yes, like that. And see over there, there are four stars that make a square. You see the really bright one? That is Arcturus. And alongside that bright star is another and two more below them. Yes, I see them. And it has three more on the other side. I have named that group of stars what man calls the Big Dipper. It looks like a big pot, said we three. We three was quiet for a moment. His eyebrow, eyebrows moved toward his nose in a frown. We three was sinking. Suddenly he blinked his eyebrows up under the curls on his forehead. Hey, said we three, your stars make shapes. Just like in my dot to dot coloring book. Yes, you are right. It is kind of like that. That's neat, we three looked down at the twinkling lights in the lap of Jesus. Are you going to put those lights in the sky? No, these lights don't belong in the sky just yet. I would like to talk to you about your light. We three looked into the hands of Jesus. Yes, I see my light, said we three. You have it. Yes, I do. Would you like to have my light forever and ever? Oh, yes. Do you know that sometimes you do things that are not quite right? Like what? Like holding up my sky and making choices for baby Mary and for wanting to play with lights that do not belong to you? 
Oh, yes, I did do those things. I'm sorry. You were forgiven, we three. Do you know that I can help you with things that are not quite right and help you make them better again? Oh, yes, I know that. You put back the sky. You taught me how not to be cold when I was scared. And you taught me how to stop my tears from crying. Yes, I did save you from not knowing what, it, what those things were and what they meant. Do you know that you can always come to me? I can? Yes, you can. And do you know that I will give you good words to help you? And you will listen and do what I say? Oh, yes. Do you promise to try and do your very best? Oh, promise and trust me. Well, that is very good, we three. So would you like to have my light live inside you forever and ever? Inside of me? Yes, I can put my light inside of your heart. You can put your light in my heart? Yes, I can, and I will, if you would like that. Oh, yes, I would like that. Please do that. Jesus took We Three's light and gently placed it inside of We Three's heart. We Three placed his hands on his chest and moved his shirt flat around the buttons. He wanted to see the light of Jesus in his heart. We Three smiled and scrambled into Jesus' lap and sighed. We Three felt very happy. There was a coloring book in the sky that belonged to Jesus, and we three had his very own light of Jesus in his heart. And that's the end of that part. The next part is the end. So we three got born again. Very good. Did you get that? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we got that's it. How a three that's how a three-year-old gets born again, I guess. For me at the time, and Pastor Randy and Angela, we were just completely gobsmacked, excuse me, how our Lord was doing this. He was, he was indeed giving me a children's story. He was indeed showing the parenting that I missed. He was, it's just amazing what he did and so loving and so um, clear and understandable. It just, it's, to me, it was amazing, the experience. Absolutely. You know, you know, Scripture talks about that, is, you know, to come to him as a child, you know? Yes. Um, everything that he said, that Jesus said, all his parables and stuff were made to be so simple, not for the super intelligent to try and figure out, it was made for the simple man, the very simplest of simple, to be able to understand what he was saying, you know? Yeah. And yeah. this is exactly a, an example of that. That's why this is so amazing. You know, it's not just for a child to hear. This is made for an adult to fully and, you know, completely understand mm -hmm. in the most simplest way that can ever be said. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that, Joe. I, I would, I'm just floored by it myself if I'm allowed to be. <laughs> wow. It's a beautiful work. Okay, ready for the end? Yes. Yes, please. Okay. okay, and this is where Jesus integrates we three back into my mind. Here we are. We three meets Mary. Adult Mary. I opened the living room window. This is me talking. On the table in front of it, I placed a fan to whir cool evening air into the room. I then walked into my bedroom. Beside my bed, I placed another fan atop the linen chest and opened the window. Mary, called Jesus. Yes, Lord, I said, hurrying back into the living room. He showed me to sit in the chair by the window, by the side table set before it. Once I was seated, Jesus spoke. Mary, I would like you to meet we three. He has been making choices for you for a very long time. We three, this is Mary. She is all grown up now and she is safe with me now. Mary has my light inside of her heart, just like you do. We three held Jesus' hand and stood slightly behind his robe. 
We three rubbed his ankle with the side of his sandal. He looked down at the ground. We three was very shy to meet me. Hello, Mary, said we three. He hid further behind Jesus. Hello, we three, I said. We three, said Jesus. Have you something to say to Mary? Yes, we three blinked. And he blinked and he blinked again. And he blinked at me from behind one of the folds in Jesus's robe. I'm sorry I held up the sky for you. And I'm sorry I did not let you live your own life. I leaned forward in the chair. Oh, we three, it is so lovely to meet you. I forgive you for holding up the sky. And in fact, I am very grateful that you did that for me. So I say thank you too. You do? said we three as he came out of hiding behind Jesus. You mean you're not mad at me? Oh no, how could I be mad at you for doing something so very brave? We three looked up at Jesus. I was brave? Yes, said Jesus. It took great courage to help Mary through all those things. Baby Mary could not do it at the time. I had courage then. We three looked up at Jesus. Yes, you did. And that was that time. We are in a new time now. And you do not have to hold up the sky for Mary anymore. I will hold up the sky over Mary. It is my sky. And this is my will for Mary. Okay, exclaimed we three. But what do I do now then? If it is all right with you, and if it is all right with Mary, I would like to place you and your very special light inside of your heart, inside of Mary's heart. And she will take care of you from now on. I will watch over both of you as you work together in one place, inside of Mary's heart. We three didn't need to hear any more words. He was happy that he had helped me when I was alone, scared, scared and vibrating in the darkness. And he was also very relieved to not have to hold up the sky anymore. I watched we three intently as we three held Jesus's hand and Jesus walked him over to where I sat in the chair in the living room. Mary said, Jesus, meet we three. I opened my arms to we three and we embraced warmly I spoke sweet sentiments into his ears and I thanked him again. I will take care of both of us from now on. And if I struggle, I will ask Jesus for help. Promise, says we three. Promise and trust me, I said. We three sniffled, smiled with joy as Jesus placed we three inside of my heart. Jonah's wall of words fell down inside of me. Tears pricked at the corners of my eyes. I felt great joy at welcoming we three as one inside myself. My will had been returned to me. I was no longer a victim. I turned to Jesus and apologized for having made such a choice as an infant and toddler. Although there, there was seemingly no other choice at that time, it was still a sin to sever my will and place it in care elsewhere. Jesus forgave my part in it. As soon as I received his forgiveness, I realized I could now begin learning how to make my own choices under Jesus' great big blue sky. And that great big blue sky of Jesus reflects the sapphire blue of the throne room belonging to our Father in heaven. Father smiled and he took me back to the beach. We played tag. When he saw that I was tiring from running around, gathering lights that belonged to Jesus, he began to sing and gently lifted my hands to his. Slowly he positioned his feet under mine and he began to teach me how to dance. And that's the end. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. My, hey, my, your, Mary, my wife's heart is going to melt. I'm sorry, take it. 
my wife's heart is going to melt when she views this last Is she anyone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Fantastic. Oh. Absolutely fantastic. Well, there's that. Uh. Thank you, Mary. So, Thank you yeah. so much. So that that is the healing of one fragment in my mind. There was another one called Oreo 5, and then there was another one called um, A Very Hungry Little Girl. We don't need to go into them because it was the same principles. Uh, well, not the same. <clears throat> Oreo 5 held fear. Um, but... The story of We Three is, it, it was so huge at the time. And I learned so much. I had no idea what a father's love was like. I had no idea. And there was just so much love during that experience. It, it was unbelievable. And um, there are many people that have ministries that deal with, um, multiple personality disorder and disassociated um, identity disorder or DID or other things. And um, they may use things similar to what I went through, but I have yet to see anybody um, go through a healing in this way. And that only shows me that our Lord works with us personally in a personal relationship with him and gears are healing personally. So yes. that is a wonderful thing. And in many other ministries, um, I've noticed they talk about uh, when entity, when personalities or whatever are um, um, integrated, they, they ask them what it's like to work with that and for me, there was no working with We Three after he was integrated. It was finished. He was part of me. I didn't work with We Three. So there's some differences. Mm. And um, after, I have to say, I want to tell you about the a most beautiful thing that happened after my healing. I still have healing to go. I'm not done. But um, our father had brought me... Um, I guess I'm to, to the point of being a young adulthood or so. And this past summer, I was listening to a Charles Stanley sermon. Mm. And he was, uh, yeah, it was um, preaching on the desires of our heart. And I learned there that the desires of our heart are put there by our Lord. It's his desires that he puts in our hearts. And they went, wow. I said, Father, what are my heart's desires? I couldn't think of a thing. And I have to tell you, for 10 years, I lived in extreme poverty. And what I mean by that is, um, like, I would only have a shower twice a month and hand wash the rest of the time so I could save electricity. I went to the laundromat once a year because I couldn't afford um, the laundromat. So I hand washed most of the time. Um, instead, in night, at nighttime, instead of turning a light on, I lit a candle. Um, I had to learn how to live in extreme poverty. And I did, our Lord showed me. I never went without a meal. I never went without a roof over my head. I had clothes on my back. And he showed me how to live in extreme poverty. So when it came to dreaming big, desires of our hearts, um, I was so used to where I was. And to be honest, I was content. I, I didn't need anything. So all of a sudden, I just said, OK, Father, could I have $50,000? I thought that was kind of funny because I had no idea even what I would do with $50,000. Anyway, I got up and I looked out the window and I noticed my neighbor got a new car, a white car. And I looked at that car and I said, gee, Father, I would like to have a nice white car like that. Well, lo and behold, on December 3rd, I drove away from the car dealership in a 2021 
white Malibu SE. Wow. And yes, <laughs> it was gifted to me. Wow. It was gifted to me from father. I drove it home and parked the car and I looked at my neighbor's car and it was a Malibu. Oh boy. And on top of that, um, with all the bells and whistles and snow tires and, and license plate and car insurance and everything to make it go, it was $50,000. So he, he answered those prayers. And on top of that, he blessed me with dozens of gold coins, dozens of silver coins, cash money in my bank account, everything wow. totaling a quarter million wow a quarter million dollars praise god <laughs> father loves to give good gifts for to his children yes he does and he does and for all the torment i went through the 50 years without him mm. and all the hard work that i did with him in healing and coming to christ and learning and being obedient. Many times he asked me to do things I just did not want to do, mm. including um, giving messages to people. And yeah. I said, Father, I don't want to do that. Why, why can't you tell them? Why, why do I have to tell them? But it was partly obedience and whatever else. And I would give people messages and the good ones were received very well. The not so good ones, well, not so much, <laughs> but I did it. I was obedient and look how he blessed for obedience. Yeah. And I, um, I urge everyone to, if you've not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just look up at that great big, huge sky and say, Lord, are you real? Mm. Please show yourself to me. I want to know if you're real and he will. He will show himself to you. I don't know how, but he will. And he is the most wonderful, loving, compassionate God, the only God you'll ever meet. And he is humanity's hope. Mm. And you can hope in him and have the hope of Jesus, his light, his star in your heart, just like all of us on the show. He is the most magnificent God, the creator of the universe, and I pray you will come to him too. Amen. Yes, amen, all around. <laughs> Mar Mary, I've been with you for what, 10, 11, 12 years now? I've yes. heard your test I've heard your testimony for a long time, but nothing like this. I did not even you expect never got to, to hear it. <laughs> yeah. I never <laughs> got to hear this. This is amazing. No. You didn't get to hear the healing part. No, I didn't. No. This is this is absolutely powerful, amazing, and it's going to change people's lives. Amen. Thank you for coming I'm on. I'm hoping um, people. Oh, thank you. Thank you. The Mary. Lord, um, you're welcome. He sends people to me, and um, I, I'm not a counselor. I'm not a doctor. I'm not anything like that. I'm just Mary, a believer in Jesus, who has experiential knowledge with regard to healing in a certain way. But he, he brings people to me, and one lady she said to me she said you know i prayed to the lord just bring me someone that understands and we she got in touch with me through a comment she saw me make on facebook and um she has stories too and needs he healing too she's missing time um it's her story to tell so i won't say any more but he sends people to me and i'm more than willing to uh, fellowship and I, I want to ask this I didn't ask permission to do this but is it possible I know this is CE4 research but could you please put Lee's website up for new Christians 
because I'm telling you, when I was a new Christian, I so wish I could have had her service, her, her ministry. Oh, absolutely. Is that possible? Yeah, that's not a problem at all. That's why we're all connected in the way we are. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, So if Mary. you could please Lee, just, just introduce your ministry. Sure. Yeah, Lee. Yeah. So my ministry is new to Christ. Um, so it's new, number two, christ.com.au. And um, so what my ministry is about is pretty much the same as Joe Jordan, people coming from spiritual warfare, paranormal, occult, um, aliens, uh, UFOs, who have been through New Age, um, you know, all their practices and have realised the deception and want to come to the Lord. And the way I come about my ministry is because I was that person and I was looking for a church and I found a church, but the way I felt the church uh, let me down because I was brand new. I was looking for someone to virtually hold my hand and lead me through. And I felt there was a big gap and I fell through that gap because I had no support. I would email the pastor and the pastor's wife with so many questions because I was new. I didn't understand certain things and they always um, failed to get back to me and they lost me and I was lost. And I, once I came uh, solidly to the Lord, I said there needs to be some kind of a service where people don't fall through that crack. They, it's like a bridge. We need to get them from this side to this mm. side in a solid walk with Christ, with all the information they need. So that's how New to Christ was developed. So thank you, Mary. Yeah, very oh, good. Thank you. And while we're on bringing it things up like other parts of the ministries that are working with us, We've got some good news out there, Jason. Jason's been invited to speak at the uh, UFO Con 2021, which will be March 5th, 6th, and 7th. It's going to be a virtual conference online. And uh, is this Lorraine's conference? Yes, it is. Yep. Lorraine, Lorraine Fenton out of Lorraine, uh, San out Francisco. Of, yeah, out of San Francisco. She'll be putting this conference on. Because of COVID, they're going to do it online. So uh, you guys uh, search that one out on the internet. Uh, it's primarily a secular UFO conference, but Jason's been invited as uh, co-author of the book, Piercing the Cosmic Veil, same name as the show here. And he's going to have the opportunity to be the voice of God's word in the presence of all of that secular messages out there. And I look and, forward uh, to it, guys. I look forward to it, and I hope everybody can tune in. And uh, it's going to be great. And I just, hey, I, I wanted to just thank everybody out there, all of our um, subscribers. I know I think we hit, you know, our show is relatively new. I think we hit 144 subscribers um, yesterday. And I just want to encourage people that are still tracking with us to tell your friends and family members about the show, um, not for our benefit, but for their benefit. Um, tell them about the book, tell them about Lee's ministry. Um, we are a ministry together and any one of us, and there's Joe's got the book there on the screen for you guys, but um, you guys in that book can be found anywhere. It's a great resource. I wish I had it years ago. And I know it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's helped a lot of people and it's, it's continuing to do that. So we appreciate all the support that um, everybody's giving to us on this, on this channel. But like I discussed earlier, um, the season in which we are in is unprecedented. So I do encourage people to press in to spread the word and, and the gospel. And if any of these testimonies have touched your heart, um, like uh, Lee and Joe both um, emphasized in our previous shows, 
there's nothing more important than a living testimony because we've all um, had issues with people and churches and religion. And what we want to make, um, what we'd like to magnify in this ministry is, is that the name of Jesus Christ is above every other name. Yeah. It was before, it is now, and it will be to come. He never changes and he's always the same. And I'll tell you guys right now, there's nothing, I'll be 50 years old here pretty soon and there's nothing in my life that's um, been consistent. He's the only thing that's been consistent and that's because he never changes and his love is real. So with that said, um, we appreciate your time. Uh, whenever you're watching this, I uh, encourage you to subscribe, hit the like button again, just to reach as many people as we possibly can and share, share the ministry and the, and the love of Jesus Christ. Mary, you, you've touched my heart. I know you've touched all of our hearts. Thank you Absolutely. so much for sharing and being bold um, and coming out and, and, and just letting the Holy Spirit uh, you know, direct you in this testimony. I mean, obviously guys, this is number four. So please, I encourage you to go back and start at number one and, and go through yeah. the, the gamut so you can get, so you can get the full um, grasp of what, of what's happened here. Other than that, um, we love you guys. Anything else? No, that's good. Mary, yeah. we're going to stay in touch with you and we'd like to uh, keep progress on you. And I know there's going to be more changes coming in your life. And I think once people, have listened to these four shows, they're going to want to see your continued progress as we want to see. And I'm sure you're going to have so much more to share. So you're going to always be welcome back on this show. So. Absolutely. Oh, bless your heart. May I just finish with my favorite scripture? Please. Sure. Sure. please. Okay. Um, Jesus, he's just, he's so wonderful. Um, I'll let John from the Gospel of John speak to that, how wonderful he is. My favorite scripture in the Bible is John 21, 25. And it is written, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? It's amazing. Absolutely. It is yeah. amazing. Thank you all so very much for having me. Bless you, Mary. I enjoyed it, and I hope I, I hope that this um, te testimony will help other people. I'm sure. Oh, it will. I have no doubt. <laughs> yes. God Thank bless you, Mary. You, Mary.